An extremely useful device that operates by electromagnetic induction is the alternating current transformer. A transformer takes an input signal at one voltage and produces an output signal at a different voltage. It's called a step-up transformer if the output voltage is higher than the input voltage and a step-down transformer if the output voltage is lower than the input. This is useful for a host of applications such as charging your cell phone batteries. In this photograph, an electrical substation transforms electricity sent a long distance at a very high voltage to a lower voltage for local power distribution. The guts of an AC transformer are two sets of conducting wire windings wound around a common core. Here, the primary coil is part of the energized circuit. Current through the primary windings creates a magnetic field in the core. If the current is alternating, then the magnetic field alternates as well. The secondary coil wraps around the same core, so the same magnetic flux goes through each coil of the secondary as the primary. The changing magnetic flux through each winding in the secondary coil creates an EMF around each winding. When the current in the primary winding is changing most rapidly is when the EMF induced in the secondary is the highest. When the current in the primary is at its maximum or minimum, it's momentarily not changing, and neither is the magnetic flux through the secondary coil. Then, the EMF induced in the secondary coil is zero. So, the current produced in the secondary will also be an alternating current, but it will be out of phase with the current in the primary. In written words, the main idea of a transformer is that an AC current in the primary coils creates a changing magnetic field in the core. This means that the magnetic flux inside the core also changes with time, inducing an EMF in the secondary. With a common core inside both the primary and the secondary coils, there is the same magnetic flux through each loop, whether primary or secondary. So each loop in a coil adds the same EMF to the total because the loops are all in series with each other. As a result, the total EMF of either coil is proportional to the number of loops making up the coil. So the EMF ratio of the two coils equals their loops ratio. But what about the currents in the two coils? To answer that, we turn to the principle of conservation of energy. As long as the changing magnetic flux in the transformer core doesn't induce EMFs anywhere else, the energy lost in the primary is gained by the secondary. Since the power is voltage times current, the two coils are related by V1I1 equals V2I2. In reality, there will be some losses as the changing magnetic flux accelerates charges that aren't in the secondary coil, but a good design keeps these losses low. Effectively, and for the purposes of this course, the power is the same in the secondary as the primary. So the main ideas for an AC transformer are that the power is the same in both sides, the coil with the most loops has the higher voltage and lower current, while the coil with the fewest loops has the lower voltage and higher current. We can predict the characteristics of a transformer's output by using the relations we know about power and the EMF ratio. The voltage at the secondary equals the voltage at the primary times the ratio of the primary current to the secondary current, or times the ratio of the number of secondary windings to the number of primary windings. The voltage ratio, or loops ratio, and the current ratio are reciprocals of each other. The current in the secondary equals the current at the primary times the ratio of the primary voltage to the secondary voltage, or times the ratio of the number of primary windings to the number of secondary windings. Here's a question to check how well you've been following. A step-down transformer converts 120 volt input to 20 volt output. If the input power is 1100 watts, what's the output power? Pause the video and figure out the answer. Do you have your answer? I hope your answer is 1100 watts. Our first working principle is conservation of energy. The power in equals power out. Power in is 1100 watts, power out is 1100 watts. 
Here's another scenario for you to think through. A transformer has a thousand primary windings. The voltage in the primary coil is 110 volts, and in the secondary is 220 volts. Which is greater, the primary voltage or the secondary voltage? I hope you answered the secondary because 220 is larger than 110. Next, which coil should have the greatest number of loops? Again, I hope you answered the secondary coil because the loop ratio is the same as the EMF ratio, so the side with the highest EMF has the most loops. What is the voltage ratio V2 to V1? I hope it didn't take long for you to decide that 220 to 110 is 2 to 1, or just 2. Then what is the windings ratio? Again, I hope you recognize that the windings ratio is the same as the EMF ratio, 2 to 1, or just 2. How many loops must be in the secondary circuit? We've already said there have to be twice as many as in the primary. The primary has 1,000, so the secondary must have 2,000. What about the current ratio, I2 to I1? The current ratio has to be the reciprocal of the voltage ratio. The voltage is twice as high in the secondary as the primary, so the current has to be twice as high in the primary as the secondary. So I2 to I1 should be 1 to 2, or 1 half. To finish, I'll run through an example problem. A transformer has 5,000 primary coils and 100 secondary, and an input voltage of 50 kilovolts. Find the output voltage. Before we write anything down, we see this is a step-down transformer, so the output will be less than 50 kilovolts. We're given the number of loops in the primary and secondary, so 5,000 primary, 100 secondary, the voltage ratio equals the loop ratio, so we just need to solve for the secondary voltage. Doing that gives us that the output voltage is the input voltage times the ratio of secondary to primary loops. That makes sense. There are fewer secondary loops than primary, and our answer needs to be less than the primary voltage, so this is looking right. Plugging in the numbers gives us 50 kilovolts times 1 /50th. I don't need a calculator to tell you that the result is 1 kilovolt.